be happy and thrilled and honored to be here on the weekly basis and to sit down with two beautiful ladies, very special ladies. Deborah Tate here with us, coming from LA, doing what she's got to do in New York. Obviously, this is going to be the main subject today. And Jen Danby, my dear friend, actor, producer, an amazing talent. Thank you so very much for making the time. Um, one of the most beautiful women of a generation, captured in a new book, Sharon Tate, Recollection, written by her sister, Deborah Tate. This is an amazing book. Um, I was doing my homework Monday night, when I know Tuesday night, Wednesday, Thursday. That was Tuesday night. And I started reading the book and just going through the pictures. And I said to myself, what a magical tribute to do all this, to put all these pictures, all these words uh, together. I would love to talk about the process, how and why you came up with this idea, Deborah. I, uh, I had, it was brought to my attention that Sharon has a, a new demographic of fans on the web, and that demographic was 15-year-olds to 25-year-olds joined the older generation that was actually aware of Sharon while she was alive. And it didn't set well with me that the only things that they had to view her, to learn anything of her, was the last 20 minutes of her life. Right. So I wanted to reintroduce her to this new generation. Now is the perfect time because fashion is secular and it comes back around about every 40 years. So the 60s are, are what's in right now. And Sharon was a um, considered the icon of the 60s as far as fashion, makeup, hair, all of that were concerned. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to reintroduce who she was, what she represented, uh, views from myself, but but it was important that there are other people's opinions too because a sister can be biased, right? Right. So that's why I invited all of her friends, not all of her friends, but many of her friends, mm -hmm. her co-workers, stars, etc., to comment unedited on what she was to them as well so that the reader could get a real good feel for exactly who she was. Yeah, and it's beautiful. I love it because it's a tribute to somebody who was beautiful in the outside, but she was so beautiful in the inside. Uh, and Jen, we, how long ago we met? Like about three, four years ago, like right? Like that, yeah. So I know your work, and Mrs., uh, your, all of your plays and all of the work that you do with your company. Mm -hmm. But when I went to see Sharon Tate in Heaven, it was very special for me. Because I sit down at the end with you and Austin Peddleton, because Austin directed the show. Uh, and I said, how beautiful it is to just see Sharon Tate under a very different light, mm -hmm. right? It's mm -hmm. like to put a, a pause on the tragedy for a moment and just concentrate in who exactly. she was. That's right. As an actress, as a woman, in all those ways, exactly. How mm -hmm. you ladies came together. How did we come together? Well, I brought the show to Los Angeles to mm -hmm. the Lee Strasberg Institute. That was about two weeks ago. It right. was. It was, yeah, October 9th. And through a friend out there, um, Deborah, I had an, an uh, opportunity to let Deborah know about my work in an email and sort of say that uh, here's who I am and I want you to know. I also sent one to Roman Polanski as a courtesy. Um, is coming to Los Angeles, and I just want you to know um, that. And then Deborah came on opening night to the Lee Strasberg Institute in Los Angeles with some friends, and it was an amazing experience. It was vulnerable in a great way because it felt important to me to have Sharon's sister's blessing should it be offered, but at least the, the grace of sharing that, it felt important to me. 
So it was, that's how we met. It was amazing. And I couldn't see anybody in the audience because of the lighting. Right, <laughs> so right, right. <laughs> I, it was something wrong. I came downstage with the yellow rose. You know, in each space, you work it a little bit differently. And this right, had a great right. sort of space in a and it was balcony a nice space area. For you. It was a good space. It was right. a great space. You could go up. And look at the moon or look at the sun, go down on the apron. Um, great space and great energy, great people. And I came down on the apron and I had this flower. And then I came out from backstage after the show and there was Deborah Tate right where I had sort of gravitated with this rose. And that was, uh, I just felt an energy of I want to tell the story. It was a moment about beauty is only a look it has nothing to do with what you are inside it's not who you are inside which is an important quote that mm -hmm. for Sharon and a great thing for young people and for everybody I think so then I came out and the first thing I said was is is gosh you're so beautiful <laughs> yeah, she's so beautiful <laughs> and it was nice you were embracing and lovely and an amazing experience so that's how we met is it that's is how we met it's gonna be I mean I I have a twin sister, and God knows she's yeah. my life. Right. And we're very close. Yeah, So, um, yes, and she's my twin. I love her to death. But the connection between sisters is something that mm. is so sacred and, and, yeah. and so deep. Right. Um, that I, I can imagine, like, to have somebody paying tribute the way she did it, because she literally paid tribute. Uh, to Sharon in a very different way. This is your own show. You wrote it. This is your baby, mm. right? But to bring Sharon to life, it was refreshing for me because yes. I don't want, like, life and history and the facts and you have tragedy and you have all that, but at the same time, you say, wait a minute. I want to get to know who she really was, right? Absolutely. I wanted to know that girl growing up, sitting on the table, having a meal, going to the beach, or going to the ocean, the first date, uh, you want to get to know Sharon Tate. And that's why I feel mm -hmm. that your show is great, uh, Jen, because I felt the energy and I felt like, I said to myself, wait a second, this is a different experience for me. It's and having the book, um, I'm going to let you talk because I have my, 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 my questions here, to, with all these quotes from Everybody, from people just saying what they have to say, like everybody has only beautiful things to say about your sister. That's correct. Right? And is uh, all the, the words and, and the honesty, the way she says that everything about her was about truth and honesty. She was always coming from a very sacred and truthful place, right? That's and the way we were raised. Can we talk about that? Your sure. mom, your dad, sure. growing up, your upbringing. Absolutely. You girls growing up together. First of all, we were uh, army brats is, right. is the slang term for it. Kids growing up military in the U.S. military. So we moved around a lot. And as a result of that, it makes the bonds between brothers and sisters or sisters and sisters, the family bond, much, much tighter. Because every three years, you've got to give up your, your friend friends. base. Mm -hmm. And the only consistent thing you have going through, through your young life is your siblings or your parents. Mm -hmm. So it makes it an extremely strong bond. Right. And like the memories about your sister, like growing up with your parents, um, kind of like, you know, thinking about that. Because every time that you see a picture of Sharon Tate, you see this uh, inner peace about her. I don't know if you, everybody's going to have a different observation, but every time that you see her face, whether she's smiling, whether she's smoking, she's in inner peace. Yes. Yes, she was very comfortable in her skin. Right. Mm -hmm. And she was a happy woman. And a, v a very happy, never wanted for anything, truly. She g achieved everything, all of her goals mm -hmm. she achieved. Mm -hmm. We grew up to be very hard workers and very uh, introspective individuals. Mm -hmm. That's something that my mother insisted on, not hung up on our physical beauty the saying in the family was, beauty is only skin deep, but ugly is to the bone. That's so right. my mother would use that saying to put us in check. 
-hmm. So we mm -hmm. would constantly have mm -hmm. to go in and develop and work on our our core mm -hmm. as individuals, a, as people, and and contributors to the group or the society, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. Something beautiful about that to me is then, then the capacity for empathy, because you can't have that unless you're introspective, right? Right. So, but you can see that me, there's the beauty. Yeah. It's is like that. The, it's like the. She was, you can see it, and God knows that I'm not a psychiatrist, and I'm not, you know, psychic, yeah. but you can see that she was in, in, in there was no demons there. No. It was not a, you know, that you see people, they're so struggle, they're so Or there's battle. a peace with them in some but way. But she was always, yeah. like, seemed to me so ahead of her time in, in her own way. That's why I was kind of wondering about her upbringing, uh, because she seems in peace and in harmony and... With a grace Happy. and a kindness, and if that what would you say, a peace with what you are? Absolutely, right. completely mm -hmm. at peace with the Who terms and conditions that make you you. Hmm. Yeah. What about the okay. process with the book, Deborah? How long did it like to put it all together? Really, about, about a year. About a about year. About a year. Yes, um, I had a wonderful mentor, David Wills, who has done, he's probably, in my opinion, one of the most prolific uh, coffee table book authors in the world. And he walked me by the hand, step by step, through the process, insisting that I, I uh, not rely on him, but actually learn how to do what he does. Right. And so it was, you know, I had my moments where I was challenged, actually, when I sat I down. I to ask you, the challenges. Oh, my God. Tell me. Tell me about that. I, I sat down to write, and I, I started having fits. Can I do this? You know, I'm calling up my friends. Do you think I can really do this? I'm not sure I can do this. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then I mm -hmm. had self-doubt, exactly. I had to have my inner peace and just latch on and and start attacking the process. They didn't necessarily come in chronological order. Uh -huh. You know, I had to I had to go revisit, so to speak, our our time that we had together uh -huh. and um, and put it put it down on paper so I didn't forget the details. And then I would go back and hone and hone again and again until it became what you see now. Uh, basically very an essay uh -huh. that conveys as much information in it on a personal level about so you can feel who Sharon was right. and what was going on at the time. There's descriptions of the era and what was going on with each one of those little essays that I put out. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Okay. What about the pictures? Going through all the pictures. Oh my goodness! It was overwhelming. Mm. I it guess. How, what do you? What? Where do you go? Where do you? Start? I have been asked in the past, um, and it really floored me. The question was, "What did you learn new about Sharon when uh -huh. you did this book?" And I said, "Really, nothing." And then I thought for a second, and I went, "Oh, yes, you did. What an incredible!" work ethic mm -hmm. she had. Mm -hmm. What an incredible body mm -hmm. of work. Six years. This book, her mm -hmm. her her working career takes pa place but basically mm -hmm. in six years in this book. And there are six films. Mm -hmm. uh, I edited it down. I had to from 580 pages to the 230 we have here. Yeah. Um, uh, Two, uh, not 230, what is it, 216, is 18? Two, let's see, yeah, about 270, let's see, about okay. 269, two, 270. Yeah, 270. Yeah. And, and there were altogether 230 magazine covers yeah. wor worldwide, uh, numerous fashion shoots mm -hmm. in there as well, and yet, from my own recollection, every time she was with any of us, whether it be family, friends, strangers, or, or working uh, partners, she made you feel as if you were the only one that mattered in the whole wide world. Yeah. Not a care in the world other than you. And that's a gift. Oh that's my goodness, it's <laughs> such a, a gift. gift. That's a great if we could only all harvest 
that yes. gift, this world would be a much better place. It's too much anger. It's yeah. too much pain. And mm -hmm. you're such an activist and so active about what you think. But you're firm, Deborah. You're a woman. I don't.